watching PTZ Optics Live, a 1080p broadcast available exclusively on YouTube Live every Friday, streaming at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Broadcast quality made affordable. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, everybody. Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. Let me turn off the background music here. I'm with Michael Heatherton, who is the CEO and president of PI Engineering. How are you doing, Michael? I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This is going to be a fun show um, for you vMix users out there. XKeys works perfectly with vMix, but guess what? It also works perfectly with a whole bunch of other platforms as well, um, including Wirecast, and we're going to talk about that. So let me use my X keys. By the way, this whole show is going to be used with this. It makes my life so much easier. We live stream every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And um, if you hit that like button, we donate to charity every single week. $20 to start, $1 for every like that you guys bring us out there, two for subscribers, up to $250. We donated $30,000 last year to the Susquehanna Valley Casa, helping children get donations. Uh, not don <laughs> helping children get donations, helping children get adoptions, children in the, in the court system who are stuck there. So earlier this month, we interviewed the Humane Society. Michael, I don't know if you heard, the live streaming industry got a little bit of a black eye with some of the Facebook live streaming in Chicago. It was a little, uh, a little bit of a black eye for the industry, but on the other flip side, the Humane Society is live streaming the savior of puppies in dog eating mills. So we've got a lot of different things going on. Um, Marty McPadden was with us last uh, two weeks ago talking about uh, remote broadcasting and the ability to broadcast a live stream from anywhere in the world. Um, Cerevo Live was with us last week, and actually Matt Molner, who's on, I think, in the chat room, won a live show too. I think that was on the live on the Facebook live show. And then today we have Michael from X Keys. So exciting stuff. Uh, two weeks ago, if you're an audiovisual integrator or a channel partner, uh, our channel team did a really cool channel team live stream talking about all the new products and stuff. We have a new Facebook user group. Uh, you can go ahead and see the link below, ptzoptics.com slash FB, and learn a lot of new stuff. I'm going to take everybody on a little studio tour. Me and Michael are going to take you around and um, show you that we're building a new studio, and we want your input and advice, and kind of we're going to take you guys along the way. I want to give props to vMix. vMix 19 apparently is going to support video conferencing as an input. They're going to use Google Chrome, WebRTC. I don't normally say one software is better than the other, but this feature is a game changer. We're expecting it to NAB in April, the NAB show in Las Vegas. I'd love to see you all there. Finally, XKeys has been super nice to offer a prize at our Facebook live stream. As you guys know, we're doing exclusive on YouTube on Fridays, exclusively to Facebook on Mondays, and below you can enter to win an XKeys 24-button uh, controller. We're going to show you why these are such cool devices in a little bit. Whew, that's everything, Michael. Well, sounds like an exciting show. <laughs> so we what we normally start off with, I have this, I should really, this little button right here starts the lightning round. Have you, right. Do you know what that is? Are you ready for that? Uh, I guess I'm prepared. All right, here we go. Okay, Michael, so this is our lightning round. I got a couple questions for you, just 60 seconds. Are you an iPhone or an iP uh, Android kind of guy? Android. Beautiful. How about um, talking or texting? Talking, I actually don't know how to text. <laughs> okay, um, what's your favorite book? Uh, Green Eggs and Ham. Cool, what is your favorite movie? Well, Holy Grail, of course, but followed closely by Serial Mom. <laughs> what a funny one. Here's an interesting question. If you could go back into time to watch 24 hours of history unfold, when and where would you go? Well, I go to the Indy 500 where they ran the last steam car. The Stanley Steamer was a wonderful steam engine car that actually drove directly off the axle. My grandfather, Hetherington, is still pissed that they outlawed them the next year. So I want to go to the last year we ran Indy uh, steam cars. <laughs> 
Cool. Everyone's always got their own uh, things there, and it's just so cool. So it's your first time on the show. If you've seen our other shows before, you, we've got 60 seconds um, to, to basically answer each one of our questions here, um, which are going to be laid out. And the first one is, can you introduce us to PI Engineering? Uh, well, that's actually hard because I've been with it so long. Uh, so uh, we're basically a human input device company in some general sense. Uh, about 20 years ago or more now, uh, we invented something called the Y-Mouse, which was a wonderful device that lets you use two mice in the computer at the same time. Pretty exciting. Uh, USB, of course, everybody knows we should, or thinks we should do that all the time. That led to our understanding of how input devices worked, and eventually we started working with keyboards. Uh, the X keys was then something that came along, which at the time when everything was more or less keystroke DOS based, one button to send a bunch of keys was useful for you. Uh, but now we find ourselves with all the graphic interface and everything being more applied to mission critical and live broadcast like we're doing here. Um, what else interesting to know about it? I don't know, it started by my dad and I, and it's still a family company. Uh, my wife and, and my parents and I own it. Wonderful. Lo gotta love family businesses. That's actually, we're a family business as well. Um, so the, oh, there we go. Our next 60 second question is, what is new at X Keys? I've got some of these, but these buttons are new, right? Oh, this one that's invisible is really new. Well, uh, you, you are, it is true that you have the first invisible button. No, actually, those buttons have been around in the assistive technologies, uh, you know, what, colloquially called handicap industry for a very, very long time. If the only way you can talk to a computer is pushing one button, that was very useful. Um, but uh, really, the, the newest thing that we have probably that you're, is the one you're using, the T-bar version of the X mm. keys, which you held up earlier. Uh, that one is one of our newer products. Um, it's got an analog T-bar control and, uh, and 124 buttons, which can you have them all on, but optionally could be blocked out to uh, many fewer. Yeah, I was actually playing with this with Martin Sinclair when we had him on the show, and he showed me how to do a merge on the T-bar, which is really cool. Amazing stuff, and the pricing is incredible. Um, all right, cool. So that's what's new. Let me go to my next thing here. Let's talk about these Orbi buttons, because I invited, uh, or at least I emailed uh, all of our House of Worship contact list specifically because I'm looking at this thing, and the main pain point with so many of the churches is we work with volunteers. You know, some a professional came to set everything up, but we aren't li professionals in live streaming. Can this button just live stream and record through vMix? Uh, that to me, it's a button, so it will fire any function you want, and it only gets a chance to fire the same function every time you press it. Or we find the use of maybe a combination of the of the T bar that you're using, which might be a volunteer at the at the back of the uh, the auditorium, and the person at the podium might be pushing the red button to signal that they were ready to go to something else, or they could just control a simple function on off themselves. So the reason that X keys is useful compared to like clicking on a screen or something like that is if a, a presenter or, or an operator of something is watching the venue, so to speak, or giving his speech, uh, he can't really easily go and, and click on something on the screen. But the big red button, which is going to say make the next transition or whatever you, you have preset in the software, uh, is a much simpler way. And you say, yes, just push the red button when you're ready to go to the, the next theme or, or, or go to the... the um, whatever, a new, a new PowerPoint presentation or something. Beautiful. So let's talk a little bit about this T-Bar. And I do think, by the way, to answer my own question, I do believe you can set vMix to literally live stream and record with a single button push. Um, let's talk about this X keys, uh, T124 T-Bar. You mentioned it a little bit. Analog T-Bar, 124 buttons. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm saying, that is a lot of buttons. That's why so we have it so you can Woo. block off some of those buttons. We have key blockers and everything. So often mm -hmm. you wouldn't have all 124 activated yourself. Once you set it up for your volunteers, you might have only a few rows and a few double buttons that would be clearly labeled to operate what they needed to operate. So, or even yourself, because after all, you're running a live show. You don't want to try to figure out where that unique sound effect button is. You'll have it labeled as, you know, uh, spring boing noise or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Have. Bing! fireworks 
There we go. Yeah, and I, I programmed a couple of them just because I knew they were kind of coming uh, as questions here. Um, so tell us a little bit about the industry trends that you're seeing in, oh my goodness, sorry, um, in the industry here. And I know you're going to a show, BVE Expo. What are you seeing out there in the industry? Well, we found that again, we, we were, we were very important in mission critical stuff. So live broadcast where it has to work and also where people are not watching the screen, but watching their, their actors or whatever they, their, their show they're watching or sport that they're operating. So we found that for the professionals, they were, were writing our stuff in, I think were probably even used in, in many of the famous things you see, like the national football league. I believe some of the instant replay is done by our equipment and they wrote the software for that. VMix very nicely wrote us in so that uh, so that anybody who has a much lower budget, a VMix type budget, could use uh, a button to operate something. And our products, whereas the and the, the real broadcast equipment starts at twenty thousand dollars, you know our products sort of quit at a thousand at the most, right? So the, I think the T-bar you're looking at there is is much much less than that. Uh, yeah. No, so the definitely. trends we're seeing. Sorry. And I, I think just, just kind of segueing into that, so the trend that you're seeing here, tell us about this live streaming versus broadcast, because it sounds like mission critical broadcast you play in that space, but I'm also, I have to imagine that this vert, like growing live streaming market where it's a small company, it's a home studio, what are you seeing there? What's the differences? Right. For the same reason that CNN wants to use us, because they want it, you know, when they push the button, they want it to work. Uh, when you build your own home studio, it perhaps is even more important, right? It's just you. The advantage we see, or the interesting thing we see about live streaming, is that you are the operator, right? You're not only the talent, but you're the operator. So mm -hmm. when the talent becomes the operator, he needs some simple buttons. He could spend all morning setting them up if he wants. But when the show is going, he's not going to try to figure out where those sound effects are in his in his computer or anything. Uh, so what? we're excited about is that, you know, while it's great to say that I do NBA or I mean, or NFL, there's 35 NFL football stadiums. So we're done after 35 sales. Uh -huh. I would much <laughs> rather be in, a, in every home studio, right? Yeah. So I think we're seeing that uh, we're excited about the, the, the live streaming is not really uh, broadcast, but it's close. It's, it's its little brother. Uh, it's sort of, you know, uh, what we're excited to see is that is when live streaming becomes commonplace so you know there's a lot of people that have home studios for their photo photography or home uh, music studios and i think now that we can put our video work somewhere like you know live streaming we'll see a, a large number of people building home and corporate church type studios uh, high schools will probably all have a program that has live streaming yeah and that's going to be let me switch to here this is our new studio um view here and I wanted to, to basically just show you so this is where I am right so here I am in front of a green screen this is a conference room this is a boardroom okay but we decided to turn it into a um, a live streaming studio um, and I just want to give everyone an update we're building a new studio and we get so many questions about how do you build a studio what do you do what do you do so over here this is not done yet this is partially done we purchased a Really nice uh, little live streaming table here. Um, we got some plants. We're going to be putting some uh, vinyl wallpaper. We're going to do blue brick. And we're going to put some shelves and everything. And we're going to turn it into a really nice little broadcast space so that if you can stay with me here, I'm going to be live streaming right here in the green screen like we've just been doing this entire live show. And then I'll be able to switch to a second camera with like, let's say, a news update from a dip from an extra employee helping me. Tess, our new social managing marketer, is going to help me, and we're going to have a, a dual camera studio. But it's all built in our boardroom. You know, it's no special million dollar streaming system, although it looks pretty darn good. So more and more people are asking about that. So we're we're in the midst of building our own studio. So I feel anyone's pain out there if they're building it. Let's talk a little bit about software integration, Michael. Uh, your integration with vMix is incredible. It is plug and play done. What other spaces do you play in? Well, we like vMix because he did integrate us directly into his software. So it is the easiest for the user to, 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 for the user to operate. But because there are so many softwares out there and our devices aren't even just necessarily targeted at, at broadcast or anything, or anything that requires keystrokes, we can basically uh, operate. 
so our keyboards can be reprogrammed or programmed to send one or a series of keystrokes on a press. So if you've got some strange combination of hotkeys in your software, uh, we can support that on one button. So you can clearly make a, a series of keystrokes, control all F7, uh, if you like, be one command on your keyboard. And then you can label those keys as you're showing here, uh, in a, either with our default labels, which are fairly generic, or you can make your own labels on a laser printer, or again, in, you know, if you go all out, we produce custom labels for OEMs that are very professional and, and very um, easy to, to see for the operators. Cool. Just uh, let's answer a couple questions in the chat room. We're going to have a and a everybody, but uh, just a couple quick things. Brian Anderson saying that he uses uh, two XK80s for a total of 160 buttons. Um, Smart AV is asking how to get in touch with you. We'll go into that. Yes, Brian, the, uh, we do have a few plants over there, but they are kind of small. Um, is there any way to use your products with OBS? What is OBS? OBS is open broadcast software. Um, it's basically the free standard. Um, <laughs> Daniel Tremblay is saying you can use vMix with OBS using the external button, which is true. Um, but if you haven't tried, I, I do believe that OBS supports hotkeys in the same way that uh, Wirecast does. So for those of you out there looking to use uh, OBS, I believe that, the, you know what, I could even open it right now and pull it up. But... Um, I believe OBS, which is now in front of your face, I really apologize. Let me just pull this over here. Let me just check in the settings of OBS, guys. I know we're in a so live show here, but OBS Open Broadcast Software, they support hotkeys. So yes, I'll just quickly show this. See those hotkeys? Sorry, Michael. So the effort yes, would be so you have to choose and program your hotkeys in the software, and then you'd have to program the hotkeys into our device, and then there would be a one-to-one -one relationship as long as you're running that software. Yep, and that's the same case for Wirecast. Tell me about the new Tech TriCaster. Does, I, I saw some integration there as well. They've done some. I think they're, they've, I'm not exactly the expert in the TriCaster, but uh, they've integrated many of our sim simple button devices. Um, there is a slight interesting thing with an analog lever like the t-bar if the software wants to control it, it's got a little bit of a problem because it can't physically move the t-bar it's not a motorized t-bar so a lot of software is trending towards just a button uh, if you think about it that actually makes a lot of sense because the software is going to do a much better transition than my unsteady hand actually uh, so while we liked our analog devices from the past in broadcast I see, I see the trend going to the software having more control over the fades and things like that, and, and me having a simple, I want to trigger that now. So tr truth is that, that our simpler devices may actually turn out to be, in, in the long term, a better product for many people. Well, that sounds wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about the future? Um, what can we expect in the future here from um, XKeys? Well, let's see what we're working on. If you've got our new T-Bar version there. Um, we've, we are working on some blue LE products, uh, wireless in some sense. For the broadcast industry, of course, wireless is not really a good idea because you really want reliability and wireless has not been the best. You have batteries and things like that. But to begin to attach to the tablets and, and the cell phones, which is really a fairly powerful computer system, then the blue LE, even though we may be wired and powered with a, to a wall war if we have to be, uh, we can talk to the, the wireless devices. So we're actually looking forward to blue LE as a way to talk to iPhones and a way to talk to tablets uh, because those may be what people are doing a lot of the filming at, at sports, uh, small sports venues, believe it or not, right? It's, uh, an iPhone is so good that you can make a camera out of it. So. So here's our live giveaway, everybody. You can see there is 13 seconds left. Thank you, everybody, who signed up for this. Um, this is just our live streaming, live giveaway on YouTube Live. And there's one minute le or one second left, so I just wanted to say, ta-da! Thank you so much, everyone, who entered this prize. Let's see who won. Um, and we'll go ahead and just show who won here. The winner is... Let's go ahead and go to winners. And I like to just do this live so everyone can see how legitimate our live 
demos are. Um, let's see, where is it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here it is. Okay, so pick a winner. Ta-da! Burnett Jackowitz. Now, you have to be watching the live show in the chat room to win. So is Burnett Jackowitz here? If Burnett's not here, I have to draw another one. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll the credits to give Burnett a moment here, and then uh, we will just go ahead and draw another winner if she's not there by the time we get back. And that's all, folks. Tune in next Friday on YouTube, and don't miss our new Facebook Live show, airing at the same time on Mondays. Have you joined our new Facebook user group? Stick around for a brief Q&A session where we answer your questions live. Okay, here we go.